Welcome everyone. We have another great video talking cottage yes, succession we are. today. Specifically, we've got a question from Jake. He wants to gift the cottage to the kids, but how do you minimize tax Ooh, when that you one's do a that? Big one. uh, whether it's gifted to the kids or sold to the kids or sold to a third party, cottages and taxes are a very popular topic. We got lots, so we should say off the hop. There is no one size fits no, all. No, it can nothing. get complicated. Yep. What we're going to talk about today, and this will relate to Jake, is the capital gains reserve. reserve. What is it? How does it save you tax? How could it help Jake with gifting the cottage? Let's go through that. Yeah, okay, so basically the capital gain reserve that we're looking at. So when a taxpayer sells a property and receives the payments over several years mm -hmm. instead of the lump sum, now this may be eligible to claim capital gains reserve. So again, as opposed to, you know, large amount that you can claim at one time, you can break it up into a number of years. Now, this goes over a five-year period is what you can That's basically do. That's the max you do. You're spreading it for cottagers, and the tax will be done over several years. So theoretically, if you're not claiming it all at once, you're going to ease your tax burden moving forward. And that's the biggest point for getting that capital reserve. Yeah. So I, again, just to reiterate, and we'll go through an example. Here. Instead of a lump sum, you sell the cottage, mm -hmm. now you got this big capital gain, your income spikes, you got a tax bill, all everything that goes along with it. You can spread it out over five years. That's a big factor. Ease the burden. That's what the reserve does. Some assets allow you to go more than five years. Yes. That's farm property, that kind of stuff. Businesses. I won't apply to cottages, but we'll go through an example here. So let's meet Jane. Yes. Jane is retired, single, lives in Manitoba. Toba receives max OAS, a little bit of CPP, a little mm -hmm. bit of work pension. Overall, gets about 30000 of income per year. Yep. The cottage, and this is key to the example, paid $400,000 for it a couple of years back. Now we're $700,000. It's done well. And Jane wants to gift that cottage to her daughter, Sarah. We'll go through two examples here. How would it work if she did not use the reserve? Yeah, so I mean, the first thing is if she just sold it or gave it over to, to, uh, to, Sarah. to her daughter, to Sarah, that's seven hundred thousand minus the four. There's a three hundred thousand dollar capital gain. Mm -hmm. So that's that's our our capital gain that we've got. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to add an amount of that money to Jane's income, and of course, on a regular basis, at fifty percent, it would be one fifty. But over that two fifty inclusion right now, that would be one hundred and fifty eight thousand three hundred and thirty three dollars added into her income, which means that you've got a tax owed at you know. Fifty nine thousand seven thirteen. That is a huge amount of tax to pay, and it's year. all done at one lump sum because we're taking that without the capital gains reserve. Yeah, so if you, she sold the cottage, I mean, someone gives her $700,000 and then she gives Same of that thing. 760 yep. grand to the government for taxes. If she just gifts it to Sarah, she gets zero in return. It's a nope. gift, but she still has to pay the 60 grand tax That's right. Bill. And a reminder, the capital gains rules were recently changed. There's a higher rate over 250. That impacts Jane. She's going right. to be in that category. And not only that, unfortunately, it does get worse because uh, <laughs> the income factor. is going to spike. So she yep. has 30000 of income. That's her typical retirement income. But she has to add that 158000 to her income. So for this one year, she has 188000 of income. So say That's goodbye huge. to old age security. Gone. She's well over, the, well threshold. over the threshold of everything. So she was getting $718 a month or the max OAS. She's going to lose that. 12 months, because typically the next year her income She'll falls, be, yeah, it exactly. restores, but there's 12 months where she will not get that pension. So she pays the $60,000 ca uh, the tax bill and then loses $8,616 of income. So the total hit here from the cottage is about $68,000, the, the tax bill plus the OAS lost pension. And I did all these numbers I should mention from Ernst & Young EY 2024 tax calculator. Yep. I use that to do the numbers here. And so this is why we use the capital gains. Reserve. Well, exactly. Let's remember, she's got to do all this without getting any money from Sarah because yeah. Sarah's not paying it. It's being gifted to her. So that's a huge tax bill to have to do. But as Clint mentions, if we use the capital gains reserve, then what we're basically doing, she's selling this with what's known as a promissory note. Yeah. So the note is structured so that Jane collects 20% each year or the maximum permitted because it's five years. You can do a maximum of 20% each year. And even though no money changes hands, uh, Jane's gifting this, the reserve can still be applied. That's the yeah. big thing. So whether you're getting money or whether you're not, that's the advantage of putting the promissory note and using the capital gains reserve. So instead of collecting 300,000 each year, she's now doing 60,000 each year, of which point, since that's under the 250, you're only selling 30,000 a year for taxes each and every year for the next five years. That's a big difference. That's a big Huge. difference. So the capital gain, cottage was 700. Yep. She paid 400, she had a $300,000 capital gain. She still has that capital gain, but now it's broken up over five years. So sixty thousand of capital gain, and that two hundred and fifty limit for the new rules of capital gain does gains, not it's, apply. It's annually, but her annual amount is only sixty. So now she's under it, so she's paying less tax right there. We'll work through more details of the example though. So sixty thousand of capital gain. She's at the fifty percent inclusion. So three thousand right. of income she has to claim on her tax return. She yep. already has thirty, so her total income is now sixty thousand. 
important to note. That's below the old age security threshold. So now she loses worry. zero of her old way. She gets to keep all of it the whole time. She's going to have a tax bill of about 8,000 and six, oh no, pardon me, not 8,000. <laughs> it's going to be a little bit different than that. Her, yep. her, her tax bill is going to be about $8,221 per year. Yes. She has to pay that over five years. So she pays a total of 41105 So she gets to keep her OAS. The tax bill goes down and then she pays that smaller tax bill over five years instead of one lump sum. So it's a, it's a big savings, over $27,000 of savings. And then that smaller amount is actually spread out, which makes it a little more manageable. Yeah, we're cutting out almost by half her tax bill, which is a phenomenal way to do it. And again, mm -hmm. we can even do it even further. I mean, if she actually was married and owned the cottage joint, then all of a sudden you're not looking you're at 30000 you're splitting 15000 for each person. That can be even better on your tax situation going forward. So that's an important point to note that doing this may have some huge advantages going forward. Yeah, and we'll get into a few considerations, a few nuances before we do. Folks always have questions, just yep. like Jack did here about the cottage. Where do they get a hold of us? Well, basically what you do is you go to chatwithclintonandkevin.com. We are here. We'll be able to answer the question, whether it's on cottage succession planning or if you've got any other financial matters you're looking to deal with, please feel free to send those in. Clint and I will be the ones to get back to you immediately on this, and we hopefully can answer your question and help you out with what your needs are. Yeah, so important considerations That's there. We right. showed you the, the power of it in Jane's situation. She was single, but still cut her tax bill in half, kept yep. her OAS, spread it over five years. Lots of benefits there. A few things to note the considerations is Jane must claim one-fifth of the capital gain regardless. Yep. So Sarah pays her, Sarah doesn't pay her. She's got to put one-fifth of that capital gain on That's her right. tax return for the full five years regardless. Uh, and then this is key. Jane will likely have to update her will to right. forgive that promissory note. This is like a linchpin here. That promissory note. Sarah didn't pay with money. No. In fact, it was gifted. But there was a promissory note that Sarah gave Jane. That's right. And, and if that's not forgiven in the will, well, then Sarah might have to come up with money to pay the cottage. If Jane passes away, it gets complicated. So usually updating the will to forgive that promissory note upon your passing is important. Yeah, and as we mentioned earlier, if Jane was married, I mean, of course, we could jointly split that. And of course, that's going to make it even cheaper to be able to deal with. That's a huge point to make sure you know there. Mm -hmm. And the capital reserve can be applied to other assets. So farmland, if you had a business or anything yeah. else. And again, that gets a little bit more involved. What's going to happen is, you know, you're going to go over longer periods of time or years along that line. So theoretically, if any of this is going on, the best people to contact in all this, your accountants and your lawyers. They are going yeah. to be the ones that can structure this perfectly for you. Make sure that you're in all the right tax brackets that you need to deal with and you can deal with all the numbers and go forward that way. And as I mentioned, it's not for everyone. No. It's a little more complicated. You need a lawyer to make that promissory note. You it's do. a legal document. You're likely going to need your accountant on board because they have to mm -hmm. file every year to make sure they're claiming the appropriate amount of capital gains. Uh, so you want to ensure that the whole team of financial folks that you have are on board and understand right. what's going on. But it can certainly lead to some benefits if done correctly. So it's one way. We got that question from Jake that Jake could minimize his taxes yep. in cottage succession. You want more information on cottage succession. We have a whole webinar on cottage succession we tips do. and tricks. It's on the screen now. Click on that. We'll see you again very soon. Take care.